It does. Like you, it's been 28 years. Um, I look at it as close to 30, and it's just overwhelming in that there's still such uh, so much attention that's brought to that case. And I would, you know, hoping that eventually it would die down a little bit, but it just doesn't seem to go away. Do you ever have pause or any thoughts that you made the wrong choice? Never. I've always uh, been very comfortable with my decision and the decision of the 11 other jurors. Uh, we were in that room. We know what went on. And uh, again, our decision wasn't based on what we, what we felt in our gut, whether he did it or not. It was based on what was presented at that trial, the, the evidence that was shown. Uh, that was given to us and that we had to consider. And at that point, there was reasonable doubt and it was something that you could not deny. And that's why the verdict came so quick. There are some who have talked about this, many in fact, who talk about this and this decision in light of the fact that it came in the trial after Rodney King and the, uh, the recorded beating that we all were witness to, that this was somehow a, a referendum broadly on race in America. Did you see it that way when you rendered your verdict? Not at all, not at all. It was based on, like I said, the evidence that was presented by both the prosecution and the defense. Uh, we looked at the actions of the police officers that were involved in the case, Mark Furman, number one, uh, the things that he did, the things that he said, uh, him having to take the fifth during that trial, that brought doubt. And how could you deny it? How could you overlook it? Uh, that was just something that we 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 took in and we had to consider. And again, it was the reasonable doubt whether or not O.J. killed Nicole and Ron Goldman. I don't know. I'm not sure of that. Um, I'm not certain of it. I can't say for certain that he did. But there was definitely reasonable doubt that we had. And, and I'm, I'm very comfortable with the decision that I made. Did you get a sense from any of your jurors that what happened to Rodney King was considered at all during your deliberations? Not during deliberations. I think after after years later, uh, I heard some things that were uh, coming from a couple of the other jurors that that I didn't like what I heard uh, that came from them. But uh, it wasn't it wasn't talked about during in the jury room during deliberations. You I understand heard part of my conversation earlier with Jeffrey Tubin and Michael Eric Dyson, just to name a few, and of course CNN correspondent who covered this case. Um, what's your reaction to the way that it is being discussed? I listened uh, at, to your last segment with uh, Jeffrey Tubin and Tubin, and then when I heard him put a lot of that blame on Cato Kalin, I, I thought that was tasteless and that it wasn't correct. Uh, I don't think Cato Kalin's uh, testimony. Uh, favored O.J. Simpson at all. I think he, you know, said what he thought happened that night, showed uh, Detective Furman where he was and, you know, the things that he heard. And that's all there was to it. I, I didn't put much weight into his testimony as, as um, in regards to O.J.'s innocence or guilt. What did you make of the performance of the prosecution team... Marsha Clark, Christopher Darden, compared to what was described as the dream team, defense counsel led by, of course, Johnny Cochran on behalf of O.J. Simpson. Were you looking and, and evaluating their performances? Uh, I'm sure I, I was. Um, I don't think they measured up. I think um, especially um, Christopher Darden, he probably wasn't the right guy for the for that team. Why? Uh, he seemed, uh, I want to say at times, very nervous, uh, not confident, unsure of himself. Um, when he asked OJ to try on the glove, I looked at, at him like he was crazy. Like, why would you have him do that? Uh, but he did it anyway. Uh, and why I think did you that, think that was crazy? That's interesting to me. Why did you think that was a crazy moment? Because he didn't need to have him try on the glove. We looked at the glove. We could see the glove, and it was a big glove. Uh, and we assumed that it would fit. So when you had him try it, when he had him try it on, and it appeared to be tight or too tight, it, it was just something that that backfired. It was something that he did not need to do. Uh, we could, you know, like again, we could look at the glove. We saw it was a big glove, and we would have assumed that maybe it fit. But he just That's... gave him an opportunity to show something different. 